Hi, today in this video we're going to look at a very special watch that contains a piece of an Aston Martin DB5, the famous Bond car. Uh, with me I have the founder of the company, Atelier Jalapère, uh, one of the founders I must say, is Simon. Uh, Simon, welcome and thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me, Remet. It's a pleasure for me to be here with you discussing the brand and the story behind uh, our collection, our timepieces collection. Can you tell me how this, how did this start? So how did it start? I think the first thing is that I met uh, my business partner, Louis, uh, back when we, uh, we were in university uh, in Europe, basically in Madrid campus. And at the very first day, uh, we were introducing ourselves and we quickly realized that we had the exact same passions for cars and for watches. So after a few months of discussing, of trying to find an ID because we wanted to work together, we had this feeling that we needed to do something together. We came up with this idea, what about launching a watch brand? And this was a dream for both of us since we were really young, since I'm a collector and I've been passionate about watch watchmaking and watches, as well as Louis. And so after a few months of discussing, brainstorming, we, we told ourselves that we want, if we're doing a watch brand, we don't want to do another not simple brand, uh, watch brand, but something special. We wanted to include something unique, something that only us uh, were doing, will, will be doing. And basically we came up with this idea of incorporating in the timepieces a piece of a, of a car, a piece of a legend. So, so why did you choose the DB5? So at the very first point when we had the idea and we started the design, and so we had the first imageries of the first, the first 3D renderings of the potential watch we will be selling in the future, we asked people around us, we asked the community because we had already an Instagram account, so we really value the community. And we actually shortlisted four cars at the beginning. So there was the Jaguar E-Type, there was the AC Cobra, uh, the Ferrari F40, and obviously the Aston Martin DB5. And so we let the people chose, choose the car. Uh, and to be super frank with you, I'm half English. So for me, it was a DB5 all the way. Uh, and there's something that, the DB5 has something that no other car has. It's, it's an icon, it's a legend. Uh, James Bond helped it, in a way, really much. Oh, thank you very much. Right. We wanted to have with Louis a car that we would dream to have, a car that we would dream to wear, to, to see, etc. And so after people basically chose the DB5, we were super happy and the challenge was accepted and we started to actually uh, the work in terms of production and technicity also. Okay, so first you started as a, as a Kickstarter campaign, is that correct? In, exactly, so basically myself and Louis were two young entrepreneurs and we needed a platform where we could do actually two things. The first one is to raise the, the sufficient uh, fundings to actually produce a watch at a collection and also, uh, we wanted to test the product, basically. We had already tested it on Instagram. It was quite, you know, it was limited in a way. So we decided to launch it on a Kickstarter comment for these two reasons, and the echo was amazing. Uh, after 30 days, because the campaign lasts uh, for 30 days, we, re we rose the, the 125,000 that we needed, actually. And we've shipped watches all over the world. I mean, Thailand, United States, England, a lot. Belgium, everywhere around the world. So it was just the, the most amazing experience in my life so far, <laughs> obviously. It's a great, it's a great journey. So um, uh, let's take a look at the watch. It's, it's, it's made, of course, um, of a piece of Aston Martin DB5. It's actually a, a bonnet of an Aston Martin DB5. Uh, how, did you, how did you acquire this uh, piece of an Aston Martin and, and, and know for sure it was um, a real piece of an Aston Martin? That's again a really good question. So it was not an easy journey. I, I'd say I'll put it in my top three most challenging things that we had to do uh, for this project. So basically you have to know that uh, between 1963 and 1965, the, the years of production, there were only 1,021 DB5 produced. So finding one, finding a perfect bonnet for production was just challenging. So after a year, we reached, I don't know how many hundreds, of garage around London, Belgium, France, everywhere. We had a call from a guy, from Michael, from North London, a, a garage specialized in old timers and more especially in, uh, 
English cars, so mainly Bentley, uh, Aston, and, and those those kind of brands. And he told us, "I got what you need. I got your your bonnet. It's beautiful. It's an sil in original silver birch color, so the perfect gray, the, the the one we are looking for." So we went to London, super excited. The the next morning we were in London. We looked at the DB5 bonnet and we were like, "Yeah, that's the gray. That's the holy gray. We had it. We have it." But the only thing that we didn't have it was the the authentication. So today, you know, it's very important that to prove it's actually DB5. So what we decided to do is to bring the to bring the bonnet to Aston Martin directly uh, in London. It's a it's an institution from Aston Martin called uh, Aston Martin Works. And basically, after a two-hour process, they can tell you if it's legit or not, uh, a genuine one or not. And so I can, you can see here, like we went. We went there and have, we have a full process where it sells, where it check every single point on the, on the car. And at the end of the, in the 20 pages, you can see it's an authentic Aston Martin but, uh, DB5 bonnet. So that was a good day, to tell you the truth. That was a very good day. <laughs> that sounds like an amazing um, yeah, journey as well. Um, but then, of course, an even bigger challenge starts, um, getting the bonnet into, uh, into the watch. Uh, like, uh, like, that must be an incredible uh, technical feat. Um, how, how did you manage that? It was. It was really late. It, it took a long time. This is why we needed money also. We needed money to do some R&D because we, all the R&D, all the manufacturing in terms of the dial is made in La Chaux-de-Fonds in Switzerland. Where, where it costs a lot of money to have engineers looking at your product. So the first time we went to La Chaux de Fonds and we, we, we met with uh, Stéphane Muller, uh, the person in charge uh, of a manufacturer in, uh, in La Chaux de Fonds, he basically declined the project. He said, you guys are crazy. Uh, we don't do that in Switzerland. So after a few dinners, after a few lunches, we convinced him that we wanted to do something different. And this is a way for us to, for you also to reinvent uh, your daily job, and he accepts, he agrees. So you have to, the, um, the bonnet itself, it's a, it's a, it's a one-piece bonnet, basically. You can put it on a car, but uh, the person didn't want to reuse it for its car because he was, uh, at the time he was refurbishing his car and he decided to buy another bonnet instead to make a, uh, a new one. And so basically there's a few steps prior to actually have the dial made. And it's about, we're counting about a few hours of process for each dial or for each watch. So the first one is basically removing the nine layers of uh, painting. After that, you have to flatten and cut the pieces where you won't be able to take out some dials. So this takes a long process. And then the last one is basically stamped, stamping the pieces. So you basically are stamping each dial from, directly from the material, directly from the, the bonnet. And you have a cool video on our website where you actually see that process. And the final step uh, is the laser. Basically, everything you see on it on the dial is from the DB5. I mean, it's from the material from the bonnet of the DB5. It takes about 58 minutes to do to do the whole lasering thing. So it's a very long process. It's very That's complicated. Crazy. It's very technical, but the result at the end of the day is extraordinary. We super happy people uh, commenting, uh, sending us feedbacks from the timepieces. They they're really happy because we decided also that they uh, really. I think a really cool thing that we decided to do is to keep the original patina from the, uh, from the bonnet. So we could have chosen to, to basically have exactly the same dial for, exa for every piece, for every time pieces, but we decided to keep the patina. So you're going to have some watches going to be, it's going gonna, it's gonna to have some scratches, some none, some going to have some little, little, um, how do you say, spots on it. But this is actually the DB5. We didn't want to change the authentic patina. We wanted to people to feel the car when they're wearing uh, on their wrist. So this, this was also challenging to, to make Swiss people agree to not sell something perfect, super neat. <laughs> So yeah, each each watch is basically unique. And if we look at the models of the watches, um, so there's two different models and each model has two variations. Can, can you explain to me the difference between the models? Yeah, sure thing. So we started with two models, basically with two uh, complication in terms of movement. So you're gonna have the AG001, which have a single uh, complication with a date display uh, at three o'clock. And then you have, you're gonna have the AJ002, with a date, a double complication, with a date and a day, so a day-date uh, movement. Both movement are automatic movement from the Miyota brands, uh, extremely reliable movement and we're really happy. Basically, those movements don't exist anymore, so we're the last watch brands using those movements. 
Um, and then you have two different types for the AG001 and 002. Uh, it's basically you have a stainless steel finishing for the case or you have a black PVD uh, finishes. So you have a black matte rendering for the 002 uh, the, uh, and the S is a stainless steel finishing. And so there's some really beautiful details on the watch, besides, of course, the amazing uh, story about the dial. But on the dial, we have um, the numbers, which um, I think are basically the same font as, as you see on a speedometer it's very or similar. Aston Martin DB5. It's indeed very similar. We wanted to, we didn't want to come, to come up with a watch that says this is an Aston Martin watch. This is absolutely not the goal. And so we decided to do very small reference, design references uh, on the watch. So as you said, there was the, the font. That reminds you the, um, the odometer, the odometer, uh, odometer uh, of the DB5. There's also two guillotage at 6 and 12 o'clock. That reminds a bit the front grille of the DB5. So, so we have two distinct, let's say, uh, design references to this icon. Another great detail, I think, is the um, uh, location of the limited edition number. Um, it's, it's located on the, on the left side of the watch in a similar shape as the button on the other side, as a, as a beautiful balance. Um, and the number is engraved on it. Uh, so how many um, editions are made of each watch? So it's a 600 edition per watch. Some people, the lucky ones, they can try to find to, to have the, the, the serial number they wish to have if we still have it in stock. So this is limited and this is what we wanted to do. We, want, we, we, we wanted to limit the stock because this is a one-time thing and the DB5 deserves to be limited as the car itself was limited also. So I wonder if you guys chose the DB5, are you, are you both uh, James Bond fans as well? I mean, I was born in 1995, so... I was in the Pills Bosnian, you know, era, so for sure. And when we were a child, I'm going to speak for myself, I'm not going to speak for Louis, but who is also a fan. But for myself, I remember going to the theater to, to watch the new James Bond coming out. And I'm a big fan of this Bosnian. So for me, you have Golden Eye, and it's my, my favorite from, uh, from all time. Also, I'm looking forward for the new one, uh, No Time to Die, where, the, where they're going to be also featuring the, the DB5. So it's a really nice. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it. So if you look at the, um, uh, this watch, it's, uh, it's already available right now, of course. Do you already have any idea of uh, another car that you want to cut up for your, next, uh, for your next watch? This is a big question, Remit. <laughs> we we <laughs> ask you this question ourselves every day. So I think we're going to keep the same. Uh, we want to do the same. So we want to shortlist a few uh, cars. And then we want to let the community choose uh, the car they wish to have uh, on their wrist. We have a few pistes. Also, we might want to do some smaller editions also with uh, maybe old Formula One classics, you know, something unique, mm -hmm. maybe in 25, uh, 25 series. Uh, we think, we're still thinking of the Type E. We, there's uh, the Lamborghini Miura in my head also right there. So there's a lot of things. And as soon as we decide to move forward with the second collection, obviously everyone gonna, uh, is gonna know about it. And also we're gonna let our community choose uh, from, the, from the cards, from the list uh, of the cards. Yeah, maybe we can uh, do even another Bond car at some point, of course, like a yeah, Lotus a uh, Sprint or something. Yeah. The Z8. I really Z love, yeah, exactly, yeah. I that really would also do be love this one. car as well. So okay, the watch um, is available now, as we said. Um, I just want to remind the people uh, to uh, use the code Bond Lifestyle if they uh, want to order the watch, and they will get a free uh, travel pouch. Um, well, Simon, thank you so much for for joining me and explaining everything about the watch. Thank you. Um, people visit uh, atelierjalaper.com for more information, updates about new watches, and about um, uh, more information about the, the process of how you guys created the watch. And of course, follow you on um, Instagram where you have some great imagery of the watch uh, with some uh, deep, an actual DB5 as well. So make sure to follow that. And um, we're very much looking forward to what you're gonna do next. Thank and you very I wish much. You, um, I wish you a lot of uh, luck, of, uh, all the best with, um, with your company and project. Thank you very much, uh, Remit, for having me. Uh, this is amazing, so yeah. To anyone that is looking to this video, if you have any question, anything, drop an email, there's a contact uh, field on our website, so don't hesitate. We're here to help and we're here to, to tell our story, so don't hesitate. 
Thank you, Emmett. Uh -huh.